quick quick bios you know Dan of course uh, has been a designer behind Fast Company Inc, uh, ESPN, all these YouTube, Google, lots of different sites, uh, author of four books um, I remember like reading Bulletproof Design which is like a big like I don't remember all the titles right now but ton, like um, of course the co-founder of, of Dribble um, and Rich 13 years of uh, Developing software, um, you know, um, as patients like me, and tons of different startups uh, and big companies, and of course, co founder of Dribble and, uh, you know, driving force behind Dribble for a good while. Um, and so, uh, uh, not just the brains, but also some of the support and, uh, and the marketing copy and lots of different uh, parts of Dribble. So, with that, really excited to have you guys here. Thanks for coming out. I'm, I want to get into the discussion. So, so with that, let's give him a warm welcome for coming out. So, um, so I'd love to kind of start with, um, you know, early on, um, just kind of, you know, I'll, I'll ask Dan, I'll ask Rich, and then you guys can go back and forth. But um, how did you, how, Dan, how did you get into design? How did you get interested in design, you know, before Dribble, kind of going early, really early? Yeah, uh, I think I've always been interested in it and never really knew it until yeah. much later in life. Um, I'd always been, uh, you know, really into skateboarding when I was in junior high, and that had its own sort of design sense. and branding and logos and and uh and uh, I, was, I was a musician and um, yeah. i was really into album art and um you know when i, I was in a band we creating our own album art was like the, the best part about it and uh but at the time i didn't consider myself a designer you know? yeah i didn't know what that meant i thought you had to go to school for 12 years or something before you'd be able to call yourself that so um I think it was much later, and it was the web actually that that um, kind of made me realize what you know what those interests are, and how that relates to design, how anybody can get in and do it. And um, I think that's what I liked about the web is that it, it just sort of opened up all these doors. Like um, you can create stuff that you know anyone can see in the world, and um, that's when I really sort of embraced design and yeah. got into all sorts of topics, typography. And, um, Did you teach yourself, kind of? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, there, there wasn't, at the time, I mean, there, there wasn't, wasn't many blogs, of, right? Yeah, there wasn't a lot of resources or to, 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 uh, to learn this stuff. And um, it was all, you know, you could learn by viewing source, and, and that was the beautiful thing about it. Um, anyone could teach themselves this stuff. Which browser did you view source on, like, <laughs> back then? Which version of that? You know what's funny is that my, the first, uh, well, I had America, so, remember having America Online? America Online. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, yeah. Do you even know what that is? Alright, check it out. That's what you came for, right? <laughs> this new logo, too. Like, yeah, this sweet logo. Too. Oh. <laughs> Wow, I had that on a Mac Classic 2, and it was a monochrome one, and I remember I bought it, and then the color one came out. <laughs> so, I was so mad, same price, too. Um, but, uh, so, I had that, and that wasn't really the web, right? That was, that was right. this own little thing. Um, but I think I had a job at a crappy uh, record label, not a crappy like, record label, but a crappy job at a record label. <laughs> And uh, I finally worked my way up to a desk job, and it, and it, it was Windows 3.1. Uh, oh, yeah. I had Windows 3.1. So whatever browser came from Windows 3.1, uh, to answer your long story, to I think it was answer your question there. Internet Explorer must have yeah, Well, it started, been, uh, Netscape used to be on there. It could have been Netscape. 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 Then they had Foresight. Anyway. Yeah. It was one of those crazy ones, though. So, yeah. So how did you, so like fast forwarding to like, how did you guys meet? You can talk about um, it. Yeah, we can talk about that. I, just to add or, to or the, yeah, the whole, early how on, do we get yeah, into too. this? I just, it's interesting, because like the web, I'm dating myself here, but like, you know, the web came along after I was out of college, and uh, that, you know, I was headed down a path, I think, to have some sort of research career. I was a research assistant somewhere, and and uh, and then the web happened, and it just was so exciting. It seemed <clears throat> endless, the possibilities, like, with the web, and things like just doing basic markup were just 
it's like the sexiest thing you could possibly do. It's just like an ordered list or something. So, um, and I think I ended up actually going to graduate school to teach myself how to program because like all I did was I, I actually skipped a lot of coursework uh, while I was in grad school, but I was there mostly to just be in the lab and learn how to code because I had no program, programming background coming out of uh, out of college. Um, so it was just, I don't know, it was just a very exciting time. I mean, it still is, but you know, early on, it was like even the simplest stuff just seemed uh, incredible. And um, so, I guess fast forwarding to answer your question, uh, we both live in Salem, Massachusetts, and that's where we work. And uh, I, my wife and I moved there, and we had uh, our son. And uh, she met, you know, um, someone who turned out to be uh, Dan's wife, and mentioned like his name was Cedar Holm, and I was like, I think I've seen a book with that name on it, you know, and uh, you know, sort of searched around and realized like he was the guy who had written this book that had been, you know, sitting in our office at work, and and uh, so I was kind of stalking Dan for a while, I think, where I just, well, I just wanted to meet with him and talk about web stuff, but I, I figured, you know, he won't want to talk to me. No, no, it was it was our, our designer was was very into it, so very complimentary. Um, anyway, but uh, um, but no, I had I just sort of desperately wanted to just know this like web celebrity in my town, and uh, so we actually you know fast forwarding a little further, I, I know I sound creepy now, but but. Uh, <laughs> You know, fast forwarding, I think uh, our wives became friends and we ended up becoming friends and uh, we had kind of a two days a week work at home thing at Patients Like Me where I worked prior and uh, Dan let me squat at his office uh, during those days. So we ended up just sort of, you know, we'd have lots of conversations about the web and I think we realized pretty early, or at least I thought early on, that we, you know, we, we worked well together, talked about the same sorts of things and had a, a common sensibility, I think, about what was good about the web. and. Uh, so, you know, I was kind of itching to do a project, and, and Dan brought up this idea of uh, it was share what you're working on with other people, and it was supposed to be purple. Right? Do you remember this? Yeah, like, yeah, all right. It's supposed to be why is purple? Well, <laughs> you like purple? Is that your favorite color? Because yeah. nothing's purple. Gerbil was supposed That's to be true. purple. And there's a reason why nothing's purple. And there were actually some prototypes really? for purple. And it, Wait, yeah. well, what's the reason why nothing is purple? Purple now? is a really difficult color to deal with. Not to look, um, I don't know. I think you literally said nothing on the web is purple, or at least nothing good. So I'm going to make a purple site. That's and true. There, there is a reason nothing on the web. What's that? <laughs> Did we just offend someone's website? I'm so sorry. <laughs> My website is purple. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Anyway, if you build purple websites for a living, we are we are truly sorry. Uh, sorry for you. No, just kidding. Uh, I didn't mean you should do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. No, that, that was the goal. That was one of the goals. That was a goal. It's purple. I don't know. I, you know. Yeah. Well, so. I, yeah, it was a challenge. It was like, okay, how do you do it right? And um, we, we did. We, we did yeah. use purple. But, um, so the idea is see what people are doing, right? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And from my perspective, I just wanted to work with Dan on something, honestly. It was exciting to actually know a designer who could sort of do the things I couldn't and yeah. help, help me work on an interesting project and kind of complete the, the loop around being able to put something out there that was, um, you know, looked good and worked well. And I think at the time, it was just like, let's just do this project. It'll be a fun little thing to have out there. You know, Dan had sort of a, a, a good, uh, you know, set of a circle of friends to sort of share a beta with. Um, I think we're, for me at least, when I realized this, this could be something much bigger, uh, was when the first, because so when I was working on Dribble myself, I, I would just upload like pictures of my family or something, just, just as test shots. And yeah. so, you know, I mean, I love my family, but it was just pictures of them and all over the page. And I think once we got the beta crew in there. How did you do that? Uh, and that's, that's actually a good story. I'll, you, you, were, you sort of have more ideas with that. I'll let you talk about how we got the beta people in. Oh, and, right, right, right. Um, Extended. Why didn't you guys yeah. actually like? Why not like a Flickr group or something for this mm -hmm. idea of yours to yeah. have like you know Flickr been, was around that right? Would have been a lot of work. Saved us a lot of work. We would be here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we would be here. We'd probably mess that up. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean you no, obviously I, I, obviously I like Flickr was was still 
there. I mean, it's still there now. We actually used to use Flickr as our sort of yeah. like reference point Absolutely. for how can we like do something? Well, what does Flickr do? And it's sort of funny now because I don't know that would be the same. They they were great at pioneering a lot of like social interactions on the web. Okay. And, uh, so they're good to look at for that, or they were good. Maybe. But not um, purple. They're not purple, no. But I so. <laughs> Did we still? We anyway. still think that. Um, yeah, uh, and then like this weird spelling thing too. But uh, yes. <laughs> but uh, Flickr, yeah. I mean, I think early, I remember early on, kind of worrying like we don't want to build another Flickr, like mm -hmm. right? Because that's already there, you know. And then you know, of course, someone comes along and builds another photo site and makes a billion dollars. But um, <laughs> anything's up for up for grabs at this point. But uh, you, you, we could have used a, a Flickr group, I suppose. But you want to around? It was interesting. We didn't know how people were going to use it, too. I think part of the fun of, of, of building it early on was um, just observing how people use this thing and the different ways they use it and and uh, keeping tabs on that and reacting to it, maybe building features around what people are doing and then helping that evolve. Yeah, because originally you were just saying like you could have been like taking a picture of some email or something well, that you were thinking. We, well, we, I was going to say that's where it tipped for me yeah. where um, once I saw the initial, and the, so the beta crowd, he has a bunch of sort of big wig friends that he, we sent emails to. And uh, <laughs> is, that, is that even a word? Uh, and, uh, and we actually also sent them um, because sometimes you get a blast of email from somebody. I think it's just irritating when like you have no relationship to these people and yeah. they're asking you to use your site. You know, so these are people he knew, and you know, we sent every one of them like a T-shirt with the initial. We did a um, hand coat, like a, we sent them a letter, literally a physical letter, and they had an invitation key. But it was a key that we wrote, you know, out on the like a four-digit code that they would get, and it was on the URL by snail mail. So like, if you're gonna launch something, like don't like, Have do, a it, do it right, and even if it's not a lot of people, <laughs> do something That's a little more. Number one. Well, T-shirts are important. I think the personal touch helped. And um, so these people actually got in there and they did something on the site. It wasn't like, I mean, I'm sure some people came, checked it out for three minutes and left. But a lot of people really did stick post-work. Um, and I think once I saw what people were, sh were putting on the site, this is a group of, I don't know, 50 people. I mean, it's not a lot of people. But it was so interesting to me. And it suddenly brought this thing that I've been looking at my, my family like for, for so long. And now it's like, wow. And again, not knocking my family. But, but you know, you're like, wow, I'm actually following along like Sean Inman's new game. Um, Dave Shea is showing me like great like interactive. Um, he was doing some sort of running, uh, was it plotting like people's runs or something through JavaScript. And just all these interesting things were coming across. And it, it both, it looked good, but it also gave you a little, like a little window into their work process and what, what interesting projects were happening in real time. And I think as soon as I saw the real work on the site, I was like, wow, this is, because I had a lot of ideas for like, let's gamify it, you know, like let's, let's turn it into something, because this is, goes back to the Flickr problem. I was like, we're just too boring, it's too much like Flickr, um, we should, we need an angle, you know, and, and we bounced a lot of things off the wall, but once the work was there, I think it became so obvious that just having a simple way to share a quick visual of you know what is somebody who you respect doing in the moment? Hmm. Um, I think it was so compelling. I immediately dropped like all these sort of visions of goofy things we could do with the site, and uh, let's just focus on that, and and sort of teasing more of the, the workout because I think to me it was just so compelling. Um, at the time too, um, you know, Flickr was great for photos, but. Um, I, I think at one point, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think they disallowed screenshots. Mm. So they wanted to be photography only. I think they, yeah. and they backtracked on that. But um, so there really wasn't, at the time, there wasn't um, a dedicated spot to just show what you're doing. I, you know, yeah. I would run into people at conferences that I haven't seen in a long time. <clears throat> my question would be like, what are you working on? Yeah. And I just want to know because their portfolio is often out of date. You know, it's not updated often, and. Um, uh, you know, Twitter was emerging, and, and so that, that that's cool. That's a great way to sh sort of share what's going on. But um, I, I just selfishly wanted to know what my friends and colleagues were doing, and um, and that that was one of the one of the main um, inspirations for for building it. So you guys, did you learn other? So you got your first beta out. You have these thirty people that are trying to use it. They're using it, and they're all designers. So they're putting up all these mockups and design work, and you're realizing, okay, maybe design is the way to go. Are you learning anything from those first thirty people 
that is telling you, well, maybe we should have not had this feature, or maybe we should add these things in there, or, you or like... You want to do it or what? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had, well, we had a lot of um, idiotic ideas, and uh, <laughs> fortunately, they were not pushed, most of them were not pushed to, to the site. Oh, okay. So, you know, we but one was. One was, that's right. <laughs> and and uh, that one was, we had this stupid idea of, uh, you could pass pixels to each other, like, you know, you did, um, 120,000 pixels is like a 400 by 300 shot, basically. And um, so we had this idea, we had this slider thing where you could give someone pixels so they could upload more, and you know, the slider would be like ridiculous, like, you'd move it like, you know, a millimeter, and it would like, the numbers would like jump to like, you know, crazy amounts, and it was just... Yeah, the scale was so immense that it's hard to like, have a slider where actually like, you know, Selecting numbers that make any sense, but backing up, like the entire site was going to be, the unit of measure was going to be pixels initially. Like there were like shots existed, but everything was like, oh well, you you know, I've got like five hundred, you know, thousand and forty two pixels left. So that means, and, and at some point I was like, well, who can do that math in their head? Like you know, that, that was right. Like what does that mean? I, is something happening? Like, so it was so incomprehensible, and it, it's sort of obvious in hindsight. But pixels is going to be like our, our cute little differentiator early on. Oh, we're designers, you know, we work in pixels. Um, but as as you know, one day I'm just using the app. I was like, I have no idea what's going on here. Like, and and uh, so we got rid of. We did get rid of the pixels thing, but for a while we left in the um, the the slider. We're like, like, I'm going to donate pixels to you, and that would. And we didn't even have a reason to do. That. <laughs> we're like, we think there's something here. We don't know what it is I exactly. We wanted to build a slider. I was and like, yeah, and we're, 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 we're working on our slider. It's like it looks good and everything, like, but I'm sliding, you know. Oh, jQuery slider, nice. But um, <laughs> but uh, but ultimately, nice. one time Dave actually in a comment on a, on one of his shots, he's you know giving some feedback and it was all good and and he's just like he's like I don't want to offend you guys, but like. This pixel thing, I, I just don't get it. It's kind of dumb, like, you know. And I was like, you know, it, it really is. So let's just, so we ripped that out. It was kind of painful because we spent so much time talking about, like, how should the pixel I slider work? But for that stayed around um, for years. Just so, in case just we in were going to bring it back. Change, but, uh, like, is but yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's not, it's not coming back. But, uh, but somewhere, I think I have a, a screenshot of the original pixel yeah. slider. I think I put it awesome. in a presentation I did once. But sure it. I know, I know, sorry. Um, so anyway, there's all kinds but I mean, both in the app itself, fortunately for us, I think more of it was conceptual stupidity than things we actually pushed into the code base and yeah. presented to users. But I think, I mean, it's not a new concept, but I think really like having, you know, that, that uh, you know, that minimal and, and not just minimal, you know, I sort of don't like MVP, but like, you know, keeping the product minimal, but also incremental changes as you go forward, so that if you do make that dumb mistake, you're not you're not ten dumb mistakes in. You you only roll back the one dumb mistake, and you don't follow the the potentially like damaging path that, that, that taking it to you know the next step could could lead you down. It was easy to rip out the slider. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, did you have a lot of people requesting features that? you'd have to prioritize or uh, kind of like throw some away because they weren't really moving with the direction you wanted to go with, with People the product? People request everything, right? Right. Um, and you have to ignore most of it, really. Right. I mean, not ignore it, but... Um, the the big yeah. the big the biggest thing I think we've ever had a lot of pushback on was uh, when we launched the site like we can't we have a very long beta because again you know, it was a side project and for us like we had no timetable it wasn't even a business for us um, so we're just like whatever we'll keep a beta just because it's easier for us and our jobs and our kids and to, to not have as many <laughs> users at that point you were doing part time and, back uh, then or no? yeah it wasn't until we had launched for a while that I actually left and, and worked on it but uh, full time so it's just this little like you know whenever I could swim time at night and you know we both had young children so it was, it was kind of tough to find the time but I will say when we um, when we finally pulled back and said you know what it's and even leaving beta was very minimal it wasn't like okay the sites open up to the world it was people can just see the work now so it was still limited and even today we have this invitation system but um, you could finally see um, if you were a non dribbler you could see what people were posting on dribble were posting so it became visible essentially mm -hmm. and um, there was like 
a, just a storm uh, when that happened. People were like, wait a minute, what? Like, you guys are going to make this public? And, and so I, I think it was like the most controversial like app that I guess everyone thought we were just going to stay like we were, probably because it we had such a long beta. Uh, and people were literally stunned that like anyone would ever see what was going on in there. And I think a lot of people liked that kind of like really close knit thing. It was kind of a hidden thing, and people I think felt special to be a part of this thing that was behind the scenes. And um, they they just dug that. So when we exposed it, there was a lot of pushback, and so people asked for um, private shots. And a lot of people uh, really wanted that. They were privacy. And uh, and I see why, because they wanted to have basically the old dribble. So it's either it's either private or it's, it's sort of like semi-shareable, maybe within my crowd of say people I um, follow could see it or something of that effect. So there was a I think a you know umpteen page thread on. We used to use Get Satisfaction, and then there was a ton of back and forth about what Dribble should have done and what we could do and, and, and all of that. And uh, so I was, the, I was the guy, I was adamant that no, we are not doing private, like if we can possibly help it, at least not now. I'm not saying we would never ever do that, but like, I don't know if you've ever worked on an app that has like, you know, levels of privacy or levels of exposure. And you, bet you will infect everything you do subsequently. Every part of your app sort of horizontally is gonna be touched by that. Like every, even counting something, like suddenly every count has to consider, well, do I count private things? Things too, or only things that people can see, and what if some people can see but others can't? You know, like so. I, I mean, I had been down this road before as a developer with you know systems that had permissions, systems that had uh, privacy settings, system had administrators. And you just know where that's going to go. And and for us at the sort of scale we were at at that time, I just think introducing this sort of toggle that was going to touch everything didn't make sense. And I, and I think the other thing was like again, the whole purpose of Dribble was show people what you're working on. And um, hiding it, I just I don't know that that fit uh, into the paradigm. But I do see why people wanted it. But I guess we just kind of let the storm go for a bit, you know. And it really people were like nuts. I mean, it was it was back and forth, all kinds of different opinions, mm. giant thread. So it was stressful because you you know you don't know if you're making the right call. And but I think what we did do right there was just we just let it run its course. And like if three months later people are still you know, Upset. constantly griping about the fact that they don't have this, then you probably have a problem and you should fix it. But I think in our case, you know, there's that week of just fury and, and then kind of done. Yeah. And I think when that happens, you realize you, you made the right call. Like, um, so I think I would say like the, the lesson learned there to me was just like, anytime you change something, and, it, and it's, especially if it's a visible change, you, you're gonna have a lot of negative feedback. Um, the question is like, what do you do with it? It doesn't mean you did it wrong. It means you changed something. It might mean you did it wrong, but it, it, it you know, just means you, you know that you changed something. You don't know if it's wrong. Um, you know, wait it out. We've had a couple other features since then, I think we've, um, you know, gotten some negativity, and so just just like wait and see, does it change user behavior? Are people mm. still griping about it later? Mm. Um, if those two things happen, and, and you're not happy with the result, then yeah, get in there and start making some some new decisions. Yeah. But but be patient and have some courage to face that like that storm, because any once you're visible, if you do anything, it, there's going to be a conversation and it may not always be positive um, but just just bear with it for a bit and see where see where it leads so first beta was launched uh, when was it 2009 2009 and then you guys have been growing so this is interesting so like most startups they would want to like scale as fast as they can they want to grow like 20 percent 30 percent and um, they want to grow fast and they just want to scale like crazy and you guys took like completely different approach you you grew like you you did it very slowly you controlled it by making it a closed like invitation only process um, you did not want tons of users using the system um, you did not go after tons of you know VC funding it just like you did very differently so yeah. talk about that decision making that decision and kind of why and how that benefited you and yeah we, we definitely took a um, unpopular route you know for building a web business I mean um, typically you want to do what you just said you know grow really fast or get a bunch of money and see what works and then spend the money and then hopefully it works out. Um, I think for us, you know, early on, because we were part-time on this, really, or, or juggling a full-time job at the same time, um, 
the the invitation process was in place so that we could kill ourselves with with support and uh, right. um, cost for that. And um, so I think the invitation process had uh, an alternate um, result in that it, it changed the quality of what was being uploaded. People coveted the invitations and and. Um, they were careful about who they gave them out to, and that affected how things were shared. Um, right. in a, in a, you could say in a positive way, not not for people that want to get in and don't want to bother with invitation, but um, the, the original reason for uh, closing the, the community was scaling, mainly. mainly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the quality, I guess, of the of the work on there was very. High up, higher, I guess, if you only have a yeah. certain amount. It was kind of a byproduct of that originally, and now, and then, yeah, as we grew, um, it became part of the of the site and the fabric of the site, and uh, for better or for worse. When did you get? So you joined early. You started doing stuff very full time much earlier than Dan, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I think we the site had been out for. I think when I actually left, but the site had been out for a bit. Um, and really, more there was more engineering work to do then than design yeah. work at, at the point we were at. Um, and so we just we were making you know it wasn't a full time salary, but we were making enough in advertising where you could make a call and say this is worth trying to trying to do at least for a while and see if we can make something of this. So you know just sort of made made a leap and took took less in salary for a bit and, and hoped we could recoup it later. I guess. Did you know your revenue streams? Kind of, did you plan for them when you decided to do, like, before you went full time with it? Or how did you guys think about like revenue and uh, figuring out how to make this a business? Or not really. They kind of happened organically. I mean, somebody asked like job board. Or? No. Well, we knew. I think we knew the, the possibilities. I don't think we knew how it was going to play out. You were just necessarily what order. I think we knew certain things we could do with the site. Um, but uh, but you know that not certainly not in the very beginning. I think that was a little later as it started to get a little more traction, and we, we saw that something there was something there. Um, but just to your earlier point, I think for us in terms of why aren't we sort of following a more traditional route? Yeah, I just don't think I think like the things that we value personally are just maybe a little different than a lot of business. Like maybe Dribble could be much bigger than it is and making much more money, and maybe we're not the right guys to to be doing that. But like. For us, you know, I think we were driven by like wanting to work on something that felt like we had control of. Um, we both had uh, young kids, and that was a priority. You know, like being stressed out or answering to someone else, or you know, working 24/7 was just not not an option for us. Like we just valued you know the time with our family more. Um, so doing it our way, while maybe we're not raking in as much as we could. Um, at least we have, I think, a little more control over the process, and we can sort of shape our lives around the, the business as opposed to, um, you know, the business sort of dictating how, how we live. Yeah, I think um, it's always been important for us to, to, to stay bootstrapped right. and uh, to not take funding. Um, we didn't want to take funding and immediately have this timeline put on things, and um, I think we lose a lot of control in that in that sense. And. Um, you know, there's there's an interesting um, blog post that I was just reading the other day about um, was it the death of the launch? I think it's the layer vault. The layer vault people um, oh. were blogging about this, and um, basically it was about how um, you know uh, there's there's two, there's sort of two different ways to go about um, marketing yourself, and one way is to just try to get as much press as you can and, and a much bigger launch and get as much get as many eyeballs as you can on anything you do. Um, and the other way is to just sort of quietly go about doing it and, and doing things right for your customer and, and, and building slowly. Um, and there was a comparison of uh, you know uh, GitHub was was a big focus of this article and the fact that they you know had one mention on TechCrunch for a year. Where, two, for two years, for two years. Years. which is unbelievable if you like, think about I mean, it. They're, they're <laughs> financially successful business, like right. they're worth yeah. like four hundred million dollars. Two minutes for the tech production, as opposed to you know Dave that got like eighty six in the same amount of time. And um, yeah, you know, so what what is what do you really gain from all that sort of like noise and and um, uh, press embargoes and stuff? It just doesn't. Um, it's just it's not the type of business that that we wanted to to, right. to run and. Um, 
we're happier moving slower and more incrementally. And um, how many people are you guys now? Is it four? We're now four oh, strong. Four, That's yeah. a pretty recent yeah. thing. Um, That's just unbelievable. <clears throat> like, four. I mean, Dribble, like most designers that I've worked with before, you know, use Dribble, and you never think that, like, and then you hire, you were mainly just two for a good while? We were just two of us for a long time, yeah. up until, like, six. Sam, who's now full-time, came on as a contractor, a part-time contractor, I think last fall, and he's been full-time since March 1, and, and then Tristan is our, our wow. Tristan Dunn is our developer, uh, and he has been on since the same day, same so. Um, and support. It's, good, you it's guys, good to have help. Trust me. <laughs> Very good to have help. Support. Like I could, couldn't even imagine just dealing with support. Design. We're happy we have Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Support has, has been giant. I mean, we were sharing it for a long time. Yeah. And um, part one of the downsides to that is. For me, anyway, it's like reading. I read Twitter every day about Dribble, and I'm just reading a lot about what people say. Because it's what they're saying about your product, right? It's important. But what they're saying um, is negative stuff. You know, <laughs> it's like a lot of it's like yeah. hard to take. You got to get used to like this just constant negativity about everything, um, and you have to kind of grow thick skin quickly <coughs> when, you're, when you're monitoring that stuff. And like Rich was saying earlier, you, you um, it's better to not react immediately to, to something that seems like it's a dramatic event and wait and see what happens and have some patience and see if things play out uh, rather than reacting really quickly to what people are saying on Twitter. Um, because you, you realize that a lot of, um, there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of negativity on there. Um, it's easier to be sort of critical about, about things on, on uh, Twitter. So. You have a new, I mean, we're at a much smaller scale, but I have like a newfound respect for Anyone who has like notoriety, and you know, like if you're part of it, like a news cycle, or so if you're a politician, like uh, just, that would kill me. Like, I mean, just I've had to stop reading Twitter most of the time because I just can't take it. Like, and I'm glad we have Dan and Sam to do that because it stresses me out so much. So, um, I, you know, like I, just what those guys go like, but you just can't. You, if you took every thing that CNN said about you seriously and you actually like reacted to that, you you would kill yourself in, in a matter of a week. Um, so Twitter on a, on a much more micro scale, that you know, it's it's this noise machine, and it's good. I mean, there's value in it. We learn stuff about our app uh, that these guys tell me about because <laughs> I can't read it anymore. But uh, we, you know, we learn things about the app. We, it's beautiful for anything we push. If we have a bug. I will know it in a matter of minutes because someone will have seen it. Uh, it's, it's pretty powerful, right? Like, I don't have to worry. Like, I can go to bed at night because I know that had there been a bug in that release, like, five people would have yelled at me on Twitter about it. Like, yeah. and, and so I know, okay, we're clear. Um, it's, it's, it, I'm not knocking it. It's a valuable tool. But, it, but it's, there's so much churn yeah, and so much be. noise. It, it, it's, it can be very, very stressful. You're missing out on um, Bieber news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I get Bieber news from my son because he's in second grade. And apparently all the girls like Bieber. And he doesn't like the whole boy-girl thing. So he's very irritated about the Bieber thing. Anyway, so. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting my Bieber news. Don't worry. I, I <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what's um, so what's next for um, Dribble? What are you guys um, thinking about in terms of like growing it? We're shutting it down tonight. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this is. Uh, <laughs> what's next? That's a good, that's a good scoop. Another purple site. Yeah, that's right. That would be a bad April Fool's thing. Right. Get back to our roots, uh, back. purple roots. <laughs> anyway, uh, can I mention teams? Or yeah, yeah. All right. So I think the I think the big thing on the horizon for Dribble, which hopefully it's really close on the horizon, is um, you know we're trying to introduce what we call teams to the site. Um, basically, if you think of like GitHub organizations or something like that, um, the idea is simply that you know someone, let's say Fresh Tilled Soil, has a their own you know URL and presence as a company or or you know nonprofit or whatever your organization is on Dribble, um, so that um, that company can be linked to the designers there. They can continue to post on Dribble as they would today, but you know mark that this. It's, it's work I'm doing, but it's for Fresh Tilled Soil, whatever team you're on. And so that work would show up in both your personal stream, as it does today, and also the team stream. And we hope um, you know, that will allow um, 
both agencies that do design, I think product companies that, that are working on stuff and have interesting things to show and want to get people excited about their products. Hopefully in both of those cases they can put forward, you know, interesting work that people like you know, it's not pushed in any ways. You still have to follow and it's the same sort of mechanics. But that, you know, if they're brands that you love and you want to see what they're building in real time, like that you can just follow that stuff. And um, you'll be able to get a stream of, of all that of it coming in. And then also we hope that it will drive more attention both um, you know, if you're a designer and you're working a company doing great work, hopefully that attention that the company's getting will also filter down to you so your work gets a little more visibility. And vice versa, if you're a well-known designer and you're doing good work at maybe a lesser known or a new company, the, the traffic can drive the other way. So, you know, good designers working on new products, those, those products get attention as well. So we hope it's a really like natural um, integration where it's all the same concepts, it's just an easy way to link like the companies for which you're already doing work and, and showing that work on Dribble, just to show what it's for, you know, in a little more context. Um, so I think that's the bit. The other, I guess, angle with teams that we hope is useful is um, the idea of linking, you know, jobs to teams so that you can, you know, if you're hiring, you can post jobs today, but we want to make that link. So if I'm on your page as a team, you can easily quickly see that, that you're hiring. Um, or if you're looking at jobs, you want to check out, well, I don't know, what do these guys do? They, do they do good work? You could just click through to the team from the job uh, and quickly get a sense of what they're working on at that company. So hopefully, again, a really lightweight to kind of way to now let organizations show their, their wares. And that'll be like invite only within the system? Right now, it's, it's invite only, uh, just to yeah. test. You know, so yeah. invite some teams. And, and again, this was a, a feature that we, we started by observing what's going on in the community yeah, and then trying to build something around that. That's yeah. kind of what, where teams came from because people were, were uh, organizations were setting up regular Dribbble accounts and you know uploading a whole bunch of stuff and then having to say in the comment, like, well, this is by so-and-so on the team or not leaving attribution at all. So we realized, oh, let's let's give the let's champion the individual designer at the, at the um, on the team and give them a chance to upload through the team. And, and I think that was one of the reasons for, for building that building that out. But yeah, so right now really it's, cool. it's invitation um, based while we while we add features and tests, and um, but then it'll be a, a, a real product. Do you think you'll ever go non-invitation based, like with Dribble, or do you for now we just have that think conversation a lot? Do you, do, do you talk it's, about it's it? A, a, like I was thinking about it, because yeah. right now it's. I mean, you're keeping small. the very small. small, but it's nice. Like like you're saying, it fits your it fits you guys. It's nice it fits. That you're if, in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah, we get some pretty special emails about yeah, well, not getting in. Uh, <laughs> well, you can't take it personally. If there's not in there, it's here. Like, let us know because we'll. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, this video is going to be on the web, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> is this video going to be up later? Not you. <laughs> yeah, we'll have you cut it out. <laughs> 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 no. But I guess in all seriousness, the, the point of invitations, was, was it's not like that we only want certain designers on Dribbble. It's, it's always been a little more that we're just small and we don't want to like wreck our lives uh, by having yeah. to do with everything that comes when you open up a site. And that jives with why we're not in a VC mode. Like, yeah. once you take the money, you're, you're on a growth path. And that, right. you're, you're trying to be, because investors don't, Typically, I think they're not looking yeah. to invest in a, a slow-growing, sustainable business. Yeah, they they're looking to make yeah. a return in yeah. under five years, and that's just not like where we're at mentally in our lives and, and with what we're trying to do with the product. So, um, to your point, I don't know for sure how we're going to do it, but we want Dribble to be bigger than it is today, and right. so that's we're. That's, I think that's a, a for sure. Um, how big and how we do that we're fuzzier on and yeah. we have a lot of different things that we kick around. I think what we want to see is like what as we do teams and that will be sort of one way and I think the site grows a bit um, where do we land after that's been out for a bit and, and mm -hmm. are there some you know what, what where do we see things headed I guess hopefully after that and we'll try to and also we're ramping up the team now like we were you know what doubled our team I guess in March. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Two to four man. Uh, like hundred percent growth. Like that's, that's awesome. That is right? wild. You guys are so maybe we are like a, a thriving, you know, VC company. But but uh, but we need space, yeah. So I, I think part and parcel is we, we want to have a little more resources for whatever we end up doing. We want to be more prepared for it because just like the idea of like growing to a million users like with two guys is just crazy nuts. So 
Um, yeah. I'm not saying we're going to grow to a million users. I'm just, just saying, like, we whatever we do, we want to have more resources to handle it. So yeah. I think we're in that process of trying to release this product we think is important to the, 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 the idea of what Dribbble is and also to have a little more of a team so when we do get in a little more of a growth mode, we um, can handle it. Um, so I don't know, I'll get back to you maybe yeah, yeah. later on the exact no, how we're going to do it. I'm but, curious. Uh, I think the slider is um, well. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to go from like 40,000 to a million. Uh, <laughs> So. Maybe donate some pixels to <laughs> <laughs> Maybe pixels, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Well, I'd love to open it up to uh, any of you guys who've been listening to the conversation. If you have uh, specific questions or anything that kind of came up for you in terms of. You have a question, Dan? No, I have oh, well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a question, but uh, I have a prizes yeah, for folks. Ask a question. And the first one is usually really tough. And then once first, there you go. <laughs> yes, Steve. So, uh, if I remember correctly, last year was either Forbes or Fast Company or someone ran an article accusing you guys of being an interesting clone. Oh, that was yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was just so, somebody very large, very publicly said something. <laughs> um, we responded by showing them the, the or an early shot of Pinterest on our site. <laughs> Seriously, it was there, and th their fact checker got in big trouble about that. Yeah, yeah. I think there was a little bit of a storm over there because uh, we got a follow-up call from the editor, some checking, some apologies. Anyway, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no new, uh, no, what's the phrase I'm looking for here? Uh, no good no deed goes on. <laughs> that works too. Um, <laughs> saying, no stone like, unturned? All, yeah. all news is good, even if it's bad for you. Oh, yeah, we probably should have stayed in the article. No, they took yeah, us out yeah, of the yeah, article that was published, so we probably should have like not mentioned that. But yeah. we're a little annoyed. Bad press is good. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. All news is good. All news is good. No, all news is good. Questions now. Look at this. Uh, go ahead, lady in the back there. I'll let you pick. Um, have you ever had any issues with intellectual property um, things? Mm, yes. With work in progress and stuff. We have. We have. Do you want that? Or you? Sure. Uh, we we have um, a little. There's a fruit company uh, that um, sent us a big stack of paper uh, from a <laughs> law firm in San Francisco, and. Um, oh. And uh, you know, saying uh, someone's this is intellectual property. Please remove it all. And uh, we had to get our lawyer involved. And um, that was scary. That was kind of scary because this is a, uh, it's a fruit company, but it's a large fruit company. And um, you probably own that, own some of, of their fruit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you might be holding some of their fruit actually in pocket. <laughs> I know I am. Um, but. Uh, so they, yeah, that was scary. That was scary stuff because we had to, we had to pay a lawyer to figure this out. And we had to get on the phone, and um, it turns out, you know, the, the, the person was sort of innocent in that. It was like, here's my take on uh, banana phone. <laughs> How far can this metaphor go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we did the basketball. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> picturing a banana phone. Like, <laughs> could be actually kind of a good product. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so you was sort of innocent. Like, here's my take on what this would look like. And they're like, no, 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 we can't, we can't do that. It's a trademark. And, uh, we're like, well, if you look through the site, you'll find thousands of other things. We didn't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> and phone things. And uh, um, anyway, that was that was scary. But but that was um, you know that's rare. I mean, the other we get 
some people saying this person stole my prior work, um, and that happens occasionally, but the, and we do get questions about that often, like, well, I, if I upload it to Dribbble, people just steal my work, and, and so that's why I don't use it. And, and I think it's actually a good um, documentation <laughs> For, for, things get cleared up really quickly. Like if yeah. someone puts something in a dribble that, that's ripped off from somebody, the community just you know takes care of it. Yeah, and it's, it's almost it, like you know, open so, source where you know, you yes. find the bugs because it's it's public. And I think a lot of the theft it gets I, it, people just instantly go instantly nuts on the site. Um, but I think there's sort of two classes of, of that. One is basically the pure theft, and we have the basic DMCA stuff for that. And the other is just sort of designers sort of arguing over like. Well, it's inspired by this, and then, then there's a lot of fuzziness yeah. there. So, as to like, well, how much inspiration is too much? And so, I don't know. We just, you just with that, I think you just try to do the best you can and make a, a judgment call. I, we have not come up with any foolproof process to identify what is and is not too inspired. But just, I, I rely on the, the, you know, Dan and Sam to, to make the call on that. They're, you know, they have good design eyes. But. You know, if I could just say, one of the things I was thinking of as a designer working for a large company that uploads something where the larger company could say, well, you don't have the right to upload something that you're doing for us. I was kind of thinking of that. We have had a lot of hasty removals from the site for that very reason. Oh my god, I have yeah. to pull it down. Right. Um, but you know, it's the web. Like, yeah. you can't put something up anywhere if you're not supposed to. So like, just you, you know, it'll happen. You just gotta check. You wouldn't put it in your portfolio probably if you put it in your friends. You get a prize. A shirt or or a notebook? A shirt. Okay. Awesome. Uh, what if you what if you put them all out and people just grab probably. what they need? Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm not gonna even. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, go ahead back there and then we'll. Go ahead. Um, so one of the things that you said was that you were struggling with like negative feedback, but you still have to listen to your customer. So I was wondering, like, how do you filter out good and bad feedback, and like, what do you actually go for? Hmm. Yeah, that, that, I think for me, I don't know, that took a long time to learn how to do properly. I think in, initially it's like, oh my god, everyone hates us, We're, this is wrong, we got to change it. And um, it's, it's easy to fall into that, like hearing a couple tweets from somebody about something that's wrong or they think is wrong, it, it, it seems like it's um, something you should react to. But eventually you realize that um, there's a lot of those people and, and you can ignore them and you can not do it. <laughs> I mean, if you remove the emotion from it though, I would say like yeah. the, the, the real way to tell is do you, how much of it do you hear and how long do you hear it? Uh, if you have a lot of both, I think there's something you need to respond to. Uh, if you don't have either, <laughs> I don't think you have a problem. I think you just did something and people noticed it. Uh, so I, th I think the key there is like, you know, is it persistent? And I think I say a third sort of dynamic there is who's saying it. Uh, there and how vested is that person in your product? Uh, we will often get. I, we've been screamed at by a few people who, like, you could tell quickly they, they don't even use Dribble. Like, so if they care that much, they would use the site too. Um, so in those cases, it's kind of. I think it becomes clear if they're not an active user, they're just trying to like get attention by. Um, you know, I think I think I've seen in the past. It's like, what's the definition of a troll? It's the person with fewer followers in the argument. Like, I mean, I, mean, I hate to sort of be crass like that, but sometimes like people will just engage someone bigger than them for attention, right? And start yelling. And I think you have to like, you have to say like, does it, if this person uses your site every day and they're passionate about it and they have a complaint, like, yeah, definitely you want to listen to that. But if this person doesn't do anything in your site, but is suddenly the the most active critic you've got. You know, that, that may just be them trying to garner attention for themselves. So, you know, I think sort of duration, intensity, and like who, who is the voice behind the criticism are, are, are what you need to look at there. Go ahead. Your price. Oh, yeah, price. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dan, I'm <laughs> Go ahead, you, and then there, and then there. Is there an extra large? Go ahead. Go ahead. Ask me a question. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> I'm <right>. Wow. <laughs> right. stay, stay classy. All right. <laughs> 
Go ahead, ask a question, man. Yeah, I was wondering. Um, so when you guys were fairly small and even today, the not idea big of, like we are now. <laughs> or, yeah, right. um, the idea of having invitations and making it seem really special helps keep the quality up really high. Um, but how do you see in the future as you grow bigger? Like, do you think the invitations will continue to still do that, or do you have to have some other way of making it seem like a special place to post your work? I think it's probably the latter, um, where you think of Twitter, for instance. Um, you know, there's a lot of Bieber tweets on uh, Bieber, Grant Bieber, but <laughs> it's the star of every show. Uh, every, every, <laughs> Uh, if from the outside, you'd say, oh, well, Twitter is a, a crap load of Beaver fans talking about Beaver. <laughs> yeah. And why would I want to get involved in that? But it's not really that, right? It's, it's who you follow. And um, you're kind of creating your own mini community within Twitter. And I think that's probably the direction that we would want to take with, with Dribble in that, you know, the onboarding process needs to be better and, and suggesting people for you to follow. Like, what do you do? Are you an illustrator? Are you an icon designer? Are you UI designer? Um, and then based on that, we can say, okay, these, maybe you should follow these people or check these out um, and make it more about who you follow rather than what's on the popular page or what's on the everyone stream. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, I think, you know, after post teams along those lines. There's yeah. an immense space between um, who you follow and between what's on, say, everyone or popular that we need to work on yeah. so that there's all these other angles to explore, not just like explore like look at a tag, but explore in some way like think of like degrees of separation from maybe the people I follow. Things like that where, or recommendations or stuff like that. Um, I think as we fill that space and you can identify work that's interesting to you uh, much more easily, it becomes less noticeable if maybe the, you know, there are people that who you're not into joining the site. So hopefully we can get better at that and that will make the growth process a little more smooth. But the trick is doing that on a, like incrementally where it still feels the same to you all the way. It never feels like the thing has changed for you, you know. Uh, there's a question there and then we'll come back here. <laughs> yeah, my question for Dan actually is it's somewhat not dribble related, but uh, I'm just curious. Oh. Uh, cool. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's all right. Seriously, do you, are you paying people on Instagram to like the photos you put on your Instagram? Most impressive thing in the world. I mean, it's 1,400 people are like, oh my god, that's the best picture in the world. Yeah, really? Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I, I was a little bit of a picture. Um, you know, it, it is, uh, there are some similarities too with the, yeah. Um, like the constraint, they're all, all of it are very small. And, um, Aside from that, I think the thing is, is that I, I was an early user of it, and um, um, Kevin Sistron, who was the, the CEO uh, guy, interned at Odeo when I worked with Odeo like years ago. He was the intern, believe it or not. Um, and so I think, you know, I sort of had it, I knew him a little bit, you know, uh, and, and he, he was really excited about. That early, he was really involved with the early users of Instagram and, and sort of encouraging them, and and, um, and I got really into it. And uh, and then they they had a suggested users thing. Yeah. So uh, that's the only reason. <laughs> you know, there's like I have a bunch of followers on there, but it's it's just people trying to get followers. Like, I mean, yeah. All that and, and all this weird comments. So. Yeah, but it's all it's all a very interrelated interrelated network, right? So yeah. And, and funny that you guys the, the work that you guys are doing really is really sort of innovating how design works, right? I mean, how individuals are inspired by the other work they're putting out there, and just inspired oh, I see. daily and daily, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, the same, it's the same parallel, but obviously a different platform. Different platform, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah definitely. And I mean, we get some flack for that, too, to be honest. I mean, people will say there's trend, you know, oh, everything on Dribble is flat, you know, whatever, whatever the latest thing is. Yeah, I think it's hilarious because it just changes. You know, wait, wait a couple of weeks and it'll be something different. Like, <laughs> like, <"What are> <laughs> uh, um, there's sliders everywhere, whatever. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I, I think it's interesting. I think it's, it's, it's a trend for a reason. It's, it's popular for a reason. 
you can't knock it. If a lot of people like it, there's a reason for that, right? Um, it's an interesting data point too, right? Like you yeah. may not like it personally, but isn't it kind of interesting? I think to know that a lot of people are into something in that particular moment. Like if you treat it as Dribble is recommending all of this content, this is how you should design. Yeah, you're going to be annoyed. Um, I never think of it that way. I think of our popular page as the equivalent of what's what's trending. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, a lot of people don't, and we hear about it. So. Um, you know, I, I think it's whatever whatever perspective you, you come at it with. But are you are you uh, at liberty to mention what design job you passed on yeah. through Odeo? Or so, no? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Odeo. So Odeo, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> but Odeo. Does anybody know Odia? Remember that? Yeah. 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 Um, it's like this podcasting site before uh, um, Twitter. iTunes had podcasts. So once they came out, it kind of killed it. But um, out of Odia came, well, Instagram. It was Kevin's account there and Twitter. Um, I remember uh, <laughs> um, I was doing design for Odia. I remember um, uh, Evan Williams and, and Biz Stone who were early on Twitter. And, hey, we've got this other little thing we're working on. <laughs> TWTTR. Can you whip up something for me? And I'm like, nah, I, I, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I got to go move on. I'm on the fire. Go with the fire. But you, but you got me, right? Very yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. But yeah, there, there wouldn't be a dribble, I guess. There wouldn't be a dribble, right? Whatever. Basketball stuff everywhere. Speaking of which, I gotta do something. Yeah. 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 Well. Oh. You, you want a T-shirt? Sure. It's the last one. <laughs> well. Uh, all right, go ahead, Steve. So could you discuss the branding of Dribble a little bit, like, and ultimately why three Bs? Mm. <laughs> should take yeah, so uh, um, the domain with two Bs was taken. That's <laughs> 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 kind of most of the story right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, this was a side project. You know, $9 was a big investment. That was uh, a big deal. <laughs> That really was it. And I think that in terms of the name, it was like um, bounce ideas and leak your work. So there's sort of a double meaning, like dribble, like dribble, 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 But, um, uh, and, and then that, you know, of course it's a basketball term. So the basketball was sort of an early, it was there from the beginning. And it's fertile ground. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And luckily, so I, you know, I'm a Celtics fan for life, sort of. And, but Rich is, uh, he's a diehard die sort of Celtics fan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they were on in the 80s or something. Yeah. <laughs> I love Dr. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Bird. Dr. Bird. Kareem Parrish. But Rich is actually a bona fide like, basketball player and fan. And, and, uh, so it, it's kind of funny how that worked out. Like the, we had the name, and then we we're, were going to work on this thing. And it's like, okay, and he's also really into puns, and um, <laughs> and so it really worked out in terms of the the nomenclature of the site and all the the goofy stuff that we could probably go too far. With. It's a lot of good conversations that yeah. it started. Absolutely, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's it, I think the the sports thing. It's probably annoying to some people, and uh, but I don't think you need to. I mean, you don't need to know basketball at all to use. But we've got we got an email once about how you know we think we think there's a you know something we're sort of interested in your site, but like we don't think we'll be able to get any of the women at our office to use it because it's about basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they were like, really, like, like they really wanted us to fix that. Like, I, I, and uh, like, so you, you really need to make some changes. And, and uh, that's kind of like, well, do women hate basketball? Like, I, I don't know. I, that would be a new thing for me um, if, if women do hate basketball. Yeah. I'm not aware of it. Um, and you know, honestly, we were kind of down the road, and I wasn't thinking about a rebrand at that point. So, uh, but yeah, pe some people don't like it. Um, I think it's pretty good. I mean, the sports and the sort of work environments, I think, naturally have some some parallels. And, yeah, uh, there's just, you know, the playoff, the idea of playoff, and, and rebounding, sort of working as a team. You know, there's all sorts of metaphors there that actually work. Um, so, yeah. 
Well, we had some dumb stuff that, like, we were, you know, kicking around, like, should we call projects, like, efforts or something? And then, but at the end of the day, you're like, does anybody know? Gonna, well, giving effort or something. But, you know, at the end of the day, you, you still have to keep it simple. So sometimes we diverge and just, you just got to call something what everyone knows it by, right? So you, you can't take it too far where it suddenly gets confusing. So as a punter, like, that's a hard thing to, you know, res to resist. But, um, but, you know, just stay clear. And I think for the most part, hopefully the stuff we've got is, is, relatively clear, but um, there's always temptation lurking. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but you guys could ask your questions right after once we kind of move back into the networking. But I'd like to thank you guys for coming out. Thank awesome you. discussion. Tons of fun. Thank you.